Hi guys, it's the Nivs here with another video. Don't forget to click that notification bell. Don't also forget to hit the like button if you don't mind, but most importantly, click that subscribe. Got quite a bit to get through today. Um, I'm going to do Shout Out Central a little bit later on. Um, I want to try and keep this video to a good time length. So uh, let's get on with the review for The Eaters of Light by Rona Munro. Uh, we start off in present day, uh, the Devil's Cullen in Scotland. Oh, that's a really bad acting. Um, most of this episode, even though it was meant to be in Scotland, was actually set in where it filmed it in Wales, obviously. Kid, these two kids here I thought were a cracking pair of actors. Uh, the little girl there was uh, was pretty good. Um, want, I want to find the music. Then we've got... Da, da. <laughs> oh, I, I've got to admit, it, that part did actually make me laugh a bit, I thought. At first I thought, oh my God, how ridiculous. But it obviously works in with the story as we find out. And another stone etching of the TARDIS. Been a few of these, haven't there, over the course of the years. Uh, references to the TARDIS and the Doctor from ancient civilizations, which I think is a pretty cool thing to be honest with you. Like I said in a previous video, the thing that got me into Doctor Who was the fact that I had the TARDIS materialising and uh, dematerialising. Uh, so seeing this at the beginning, it just made, give me a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. And I uh, just want to quick say that uh, this is a fantastic view. And if you've never been to Wales, um, I did um, a charity event here on Snowdon in Wales, and this is pretty much everything you see. It's fantastic. Just thought I'd throw that out there. But I didn't see a little blue box. Sorry. So the TARDIS crew here, uh, back in time to prove a theory. Basically, the Doctor's ego has been chiselled upon here uh, by Bill, who is insisting that she knows more about Romans than he does. Uh, he, but he's been there. I love his little story about that, the fact that um, he's farmed, he's juggled, he's doing everything uh, with Romans. I think this TARDIS crew, the three of them, are, are, are one of the best trio we've had in the TARDIS for a while, in my opinion. You've got the uh, the Doctor, Bill, Nardole there, who I just think, my own personal opinion, I think I think this is one of the best three we've had for quite some time. So my first impressions of the episode so far were okay, you know, I like a good, I like a, a good time travelling, going back in time, meet some Romans. Yeah, okay, I'm I'm for this. Uh, but why has she got a painted face? Things that are going through my head. Another thing that's going through my head is how many more times this season are we going to see Bill fall down a hole? This girl, I'm telling, she may be quite intelligent, but she just attracts big holes. But it also gets me thinking, is there, a, is there a, a subliminal message? Is that the right word? Is that the right word? A message that says, how many times is Bill going to fall down a hole? Does this happen? have something to do with potentially her demise at the end of the season? Hmm. With the Doctor and Nod, I'll have to find some Roman bodies. Nice of them. Uh, it, Nardal discovers that the uh, the crow is... Dark, dark. It's not actually delivering a message from Winterfell. Um, it's actually trying to communicate. It's talking to where the Doctor replies that all crows uh, talk. Uh, but they're just, in a, they're just grumpy now. Um, another fantastic um, screenshot here of the actual scenery where this set was used in Wales. Uh, meant to be Scotland. But Scotland's always damp. Which it isn't for you. Uh, I'm actually half Scottish, uh, Clan Fraser, but that probably means nothing to a lot of you. Uh, but uh, Scotland's not always damp, just for the record there. Okay. Now, along with uh, the tide has been bigger on the inside, um, another moment is when companions realise that the tide is can, um, has got a translation matrix which people can understand and uh, other languages, and there's a great. Um, Eureka moments where Bill actually realises it's the Doctor or the TARDIS that's actually allowing an English lady and a, a man of Latin origins to be able to communicate. But the Roman soldier is, you know, he's obviously a little bit unhappy with the fact that most of his people are having a bad day, like this chap here. It's just been the, the feel of the episode so far, as I was watching it, 
it, it it's good. You got a good bit of story. Lots of comedy, like uh, Nardal basically saying this guy was killed by Scotland, um, which there's plenty of funny uh, references in this. And then we meet these wise guys. Oh. We now get our first look at the monster on this episode, the creature, if you like. Um, as it comes towarding towards them, you can see it can, it can only see blue for some reason. And um, there we go. That's our first look at the monster for this episode. Not a very clear first look at the monster, unless you actually pause uh, the episode at just the right time. But uh, it looks like some kind of Jurassic Park little shop of horrors esque type of creature. <laughs> Ugh, ugly. <laughs> Quick shout out Central Time where I just wanted to say hi to a couple of people. Firstly, hi Kathleen. You can follow Kathleen at cats underscore cats balls on Twitter. Big Doctor Who fan and just loving life. Can't say fairer than that. Can you? And but just follow this guy, wise guy as well on YouTube. Um, and I for mistakes he has. Check his videos and see for yourself, make your own opinion. Right then, let's crack on. Now in my next time uh, trailer video that I did a few days back, I noticed that there's actually no adults. The Doctor does actually say in a scene, uh, so are you the one that's, you know, are you the almighty gatekeeper then? So if you're the gatekeeper, where are all the adults? Yeah, where are all the adults? I think it was in this scene here. Where are all the adults? I found a couple in that shot. So, uh... Yeah, they didn't do that one very well. There must have been a shorter of uh, a few extras and got these two fellas in uh, to pretend to be children. Bit weird. Uh, we do meet the gatekeeper anyway in this uh, in this scene, and um, we also meet the keymaster and Zool. No, 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 that's that's Ghostbusters. But um, you, we do meet the uh, key. No, no, we don't. We meet the gatekeeper. <laughs> I'm losing the plot here. I'm going to go and sit in the dark room. The Doctor's comedy gold in this episode. Uh, what did you do? Uh, you put, how can she be the lady? She's just an embryo. Uh, what did you do? Throw your action figures at it. I thought was fantastic. And uh, it comes a little bit later on in the story. But when she says, with your lollipop and your TV aerial. <laughs> it's just, I think this episode is probably uh, one of the funniest um to be honest with you, uh, there was lots and lots of little uh, one-liners which I thought were fantastic, brilliant. Now, just going back to the Ghostbusters reference for one second. Here we see uh, the Doctor looking into the uh, into the gate. Um, as he steps in and looks, he sees a load of creatures uh, just here, to where one of which actually just comes out just to basically just come and say hi. Now, Ghostbusters reference. Key master, well, gatekeeper, should I say? And this character, this here, looks extremely like Zool from Ghostbusters. So there's that picture, and here is Zool from dun, 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 Ghostbusters. <laughs> they look a little bit similar, but uh, not quite. But I just thought I'd throw that one out there for you. It probably is nothing. But as I spotted it, I just thought it'd be rude of me, as I'm doing a review video, not to share that with you. Okay. All in all, this was an enjoyable episode. Uh, the fact that we got to see some Romans again, which was pretty good, to be fair, because we haven't seen any Romans since Rory. Uh, the the whole aspect, if it's like a... I don't know if you've ever read it, uh, but it reminded me of a little bit like Lord of the Flies, where um, there was no adults left on the, the island and the kids sort of had to fend for themselves. It sort of reminded me a little bit of that. Bringing two potentially um, savage races together i mean the romans they were uh reno renowned for being a little bit crazy from time to time so when it got to the end of the story and they were all uh, the two different sides were battling together for one goal i thought was uh, a nice little touch there towards the end special effects wise not bad 
um, bit of CGI used there with the monster, uh, which was actually a pretty cool looking monster to be honest with you. Even though I did joke it looked a little bit like Zool. Um, I wasn't disappointed about anything in the story really. They bringed up briefly Bill being uh, gay and the fact that they had uh, gay men in Roman times as well, which was a pretty nice little uh, mention to be honest with you. Um, just the whole storyline, I thought, was brilliant. Well written, well acted. The use of the extras and the young, uh, the young men and women, um, in this, I thought, was just overall brilliant. Nice little filler episode, filler episode, should I say? Um, but with a minor little twist at the end. So, with that final scene, what do you guys think? Um, do you think Missy is trying to pull the wool over the Doctor's eyes and uh, everybody else in the TARDIS, you think she's trying to trick them? Or do you legitimately think that she is actually trying to turn over a new leaf? Me, personally, it's, it's, she is, she may be Missy, she may be a lady, she may be looking vulnerable. Um, not in this shot, she's not, but she is looking vulnerable. But, essentially, she is still the master. She's still evil. Leopards don't change their spots, unfortunately. So, what do you guys think? Please do me the honour of hitting that notification bell to see more. Hit that like button, if you don't mind, because it means a lot to me. And, or the, and also, sorry, please subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Um, this is just a light-hearted video. I don't take anything too seriously. I just give my honest opinions. Please let me know yours. Until next time, goodbye.